Welcome to HP Tuner's GM Gen 3 Training Part 29. In this video, we're going to take a look at doing our idle control tuning procedure on a cable-driven LS throttle body application. So the cable-driven throttle bodies have an idle control motor, the drive-by-wire throttle bodies do not. So the tuning procedure and the channels and the information we need to take a look at is going to be different. So we're going to go and look at specifically how to go in and tune with our cable-driven throttle bodies, learning how to go into our VCM scanner, create custom histogram channels, and then being able to take that data and go back in and repopulate and fix our idle control tables. We're going to have a lot to cover, so let's jump into this video so we can check this all out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our idle control tuning on our cable-driven GM Gen 3 applications. Our idle control videos in our Gen 3 course were taking more of a universal, generic approach to our idle control tuning. They were somewhat suited towards the drive-by-wire applications, so I've had a lot of questions on what to do with a cable-driven style throttle body. I'm gonna be addressing those in this video. So we're gonna look at just the general tuning procedure with a cable-driven throttle body for idle control, and then jumping into our VCM scanner, learning what channels to log, learning how to create custom math channels, and then creating custom histograms so that we can go back in and populate our tables out. We can get everything sorted out. There's gonna be some specific things we need to take a look at and talk about in order to make sure you have your idle control dialed in for a cable-driven style throttle body. So first thing we're gonna do is open up a file associated with a cable-driven throttle body so we can see all the programming uh, details. Let's go to File, let's go to Open, and we're gonna move into our HP Tuners folder, which is under Documents, HP Tuners, Logs and Tunes, and in the Samples folder, we're gonna have a bunch of different sample files that we can work with. I'm gonna grab my 2002 Chevy Camaro P01 file. So let's grab that and click open. This is a cable driven style throttle body with an idle control motor. So this is not a drive-by wire style application. So let's go into engine and we're gonna go here to idle and then we'll move into airflow here. So let's talk about the primary differences between a cable driven throttle body and a drive-by wire throttle body for the idle control since we've focused a little bit more heavily on the drive-by wire applications when we're going in some of the other videos in the training course we're just going to be uh, doing a compare and contrast here and just understanding the differences so on a drive-by wire application we're going to be controlling the throttle plate virtually um, electronically through our programming here if we open the throttle plate more we're going to allow more airflow into the engine if we close the throttle plate it's going to allow less airflow into the engine so by manipulating the airflow coming into the engine we'll be regulating or idle torque. Now we're going to be using spark timing and airflow together to achieve that idle torque. When we install a larger camshaft into our engine, we're going to be losing idle torque, and therefore we'd command the throttle plate to open more. We'd accomplish that programming our base running airflow values here. That's going to be translating the throttle plate movement, allowing the throttle plate to open, also offsetting that with spark timing so we get the idle torque back in line, get to get the engine to idle where we want it to be at, at the desired idle RPM that we're programming here and our idle RPM um, conditions here. So we're setting the uh, minimum speed that we want to have for the idle control in our parameters here. So we went over that. We should understand what that means, what that represents um, for idle control tables. Now, when we're talking about a cable-driven throttle body, we're going to find things are a little bit different. We're going to have our throttle plate actuated by a cable from our gas pedal in the vehicle, and we're going to find that the throttle plate's open a certain amount. Um, from a idle set screw. That idle set screw is going to be allowing the minimum airflow into the engine and then any additional airflow above and beyond that is going to be coming from the idle control motor. It's essentially a controlled vacuum leak and we're going to find it's what's called a stepper motor. It has 0 to 310 step position it can move. 0 means that it's c contributing no airflow. 310 steps means the idle control motor is completely open allowing the most amount of airflow into the engine. So it's essentially going to be controlled vacuum leak. Now when we're doing our programming, going into something like our base running airflow table here, we're going to be commanding more airflow to get our idle torque back in line if we've installed a large camshaft. Um, and that's going to be commanding that stepper motor to open more and more to allow the desired idle speed that we're requesting here in a base running airflow table to be delivered. Now the problem is going to be the idle control motor only has a certain range of steps from 0 to 310 steps. We want to see on a warm engine, we want to find that our idle steps are between 30 and 40. That way, it's able to deliver more airflow if we need, if we're commanding something like our startup airflow, or throttle follow, or throttle cracker table, or even something like our cooling fans or AC offsets. We want to make sure that we have enough airflow reserve in the stepper position that it can function properly. If we find that we're at something like 100 or 150 steps, and we're starting to command a good amount of airflow from something like our throttle cracker, we're not going to deliver that airflow. We can fall short, we can find that the engine might stall, um, it's going to be doing things that we don't want to have happen. So we want to make sure 
that our idle stepper motor is operating in the optimal position. So if we jump into our VCM scanner here, I have a logging list open right now. If we actually Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.